Yeah, it's going down, man. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. We got a very special guest today, man. Uh, this man's name has come up on a bunch of episodes, man. I've been trying to get him here. When we talk about, you know, a whole lot of just the foundation of when the screwed up click thing went from, you know, making the flows and the freestyles and everything to actually making the album. We talk about DEA, man. We got to talk about KK, man. What's going down? What's happening? What's happening, man? Nice to be with you, bro. For sure, for sure, man. What's new with yeah. you? Shit, nothing. Same old shit every day. Yeah. Nothing changed. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shit, I wish, but, you know, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> On the music and everything, what's been going down with the music, man? Uh, man, we just been chilling, man. You know what I'm saying? We been chilling, but it's like, you know, like our shit's such a classic, you know what I'm saying? To where doing it again, it's, it's just different ways to do it, man. Like I was talking on Run Today and it's like, I really want to just like grab, like we was, you know, Mike D was from Third Ward, Pokey was from Yellowstone, Key was from uh, Hershelwood, we was from, um, you know, Dead End, you feel me? Uh, and just grab somebody hard from different areas and form the group, hmm. you know what I'm saying? I thought about that. And I don't know, it's, it's just different ways. Then I thought about the dudes in the hood, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, they take the baton, do whatever they gonna do with it. Cause really, when you when you say dead end, it's really like the hood made it dead end. Hmm. It wasn't dead end, you know what I'm saying? So they embraced it like that. So I think it's just, it's, it's bigger, it's more than just, just me and him. I mean, you know, it's yeah. whatever. It's whoever in the hood, whoever, you know, whoever say dead end, it's, you know, they're part of yeah. what we do yeah i mean talk about that though man because the history runs so deep man like talk about just kind of like coming up in the dead end man because you know you man. hear about the arlings and you know selinski and yeah, you know yeah, just out that whole area man like yeah man man like like back in the day it was it was like it was it was real crazy like i don't have a friend that didn't go to jail for killing somebody no like, shit at a young age you know what i'm saying but it was wild was like it? that. Three eighty D was telling me something like that, man. It was, was wild down. in my apartments. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it was now nah, really the gates. You know what I'm saying? The leans was more player. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Was, and you go to the leans back in the day. You gonna you gonna catch the stick ones and all them, them type dudes. They going to school. They mama got a little money. They dressing nice. They got all the girls over there. <laughs> they they ain't trying no trouble, no no drama. But you got the pole motherfuckers across the street. Young, we was young, you know, we 13, 14, 15. And, and, what, and what what apartment set was this? That was in Kingsgate, it's across the street. Kingsgate, okay. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's across the street. I'm really from across the street, you know what I'm saying? But when I got out in 93, everybody was in Darlene's. Oh well, man, we used to just go over there just to fight somebody. Yeah, you know? <laughs> as kids, this is what y'all doing. Yeah. You know, we 13, 14, we don't have nothing. But I'm telling you, it's so wild around there to where what we was doing wasn't really just focused on because you got, man, it's crack central. You know what I'm saying? Like, like really, like whatever you see in LA, like back in the day with a lot going on, motherfucker jumping on the Dauphine over there, motherfucker chasing the one over there. You can't go over here. You can't, like, it had areas that was controlled by two, two different people that you just couldn't go in. Like, now we couldn't run through there. You know what I'm saying? Now, we run through all that, do all that, you know what I'm saying? But you couldn't run through that. And this is like what year? How early in, in the crack like game 80, was this? Hey, this? This is when it was popping, like 80, I'm going to say about 87, 88, you know what I'm saying? 86, 87, 88, it was, it was crazy. It was on fire. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was crazy. So, yeah, so y'all 13 years old, y'all running around now, you know what I'm saying? At what point do y'all start getting into, like, the, the trouble for real? Like, whether it's hustling or whatever y'all getting in into? in the trouble for real at 13. Like, I remember at 14, shit, we, uh, my homeboy grandmother died. And when his grand, see, we, we dealing with things like, yo, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, my mama got on drugs. So that destroyed everything I knew. You know what I'm saying? How it destroyed. It, what age are you at this time? I'm thir- I, when my mom when I when I started, I was probably about ten. You know what I'm saying? I was probably about in the fifth. I was I was about ten. I was about ten when I when I realized it, or when it started affecting our life. You know what I'm saying? Well, you ain't getting no school clothes. You're not getting no. The lights might be out. You might be. You know what I'm saying? And 
But I, but one thing about it, I've been in the neighborhood. I never, my mama was in the neighborhood moving around doing whatever she do, but I never seen her. Mm. You see what I'm saying? It's just so, it was like we was in two different worlds. You know what I'm saying? But that, so that affected a lot of, a lot of different situations. But to, to make it long, my homeboy mother was on drugs. His grandma was his backbone. She died. When she died, they left him pretty much to himself. So all us started just living in that motherfucker, man. We stayed now good. Y'all are seven kids months. living in the spot. Man, we stayed now about a good seven months, man. Without paying no rent, without doing nothing. You know, going out, you know, we might break in the house during school time, bring the shit back, sell that shit. Or uh, later on, you know, people just committing crimes. They were committing so many crimes that one day they, the, the homicide came in that motherfucker. No shit. And that was the end of that. You know what I'm saying? As I knew it. You know what I'm saying? On that, but but it, it was situations. We had so many. When when crack hit, it destroyed. It really it really did destroy a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it destroyed my generation of people. And we was all out there just trying to figure it out. So we, shit, man, we breaking in houses. We stealing, we fighting, we drinking. You know, we don't have no supervision. You know what I'm Are you hustling any, or it's just a bunch of just like I that started hustling. My brother, I bought like a like a wholesale for my brother for like a hundred dollars. That's how my mom, my brother would always start shit. You know what I'm saying? Like he 15, so when you 13, yeah. And my mom was so fucking crazy that the 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 the, the dealers knew her. You know what I'm saying? They knew not to fuck. They knew not to fuck with us unless she said. So they gonna ask her, they asked, and so my brother had got permission, damn that permission, you know what I'm saying? And once they do that, you know, shit, that's like, I can do it. So I bought it from my brother. I started hustling um, probably about, about a good 87, you know what I'm saying, about 87. So you were like about 14, right about the time? About, about 13, 13, 14, 14, 13, 14. Shit like that. I was, I was, I was, I was in middle school. Hmm. Well, so what middle school you going to, Thomas? Where you I at? went to Thomas and Jane Long. We was doing, see, that's the thing. We had moved to Bel Air. You know, my mother was doing good. But she started that out there. And we moved back, and I went to Thomas. But when I went to Thomas, I never I never went. I never I never completed another grade, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I really like. You ain't got no supervision, man. Then it's like, it was crazy back then. So, eighth grade, pretty much, you just done. I never made it past the seventh. Oh, shit. I really flunked the sixth three times. But it was for attendance. I wasn't going. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that I was dumb or nothing. But when I went to juvenile, I really learned a lot. That's where I grew up at. Like, I wouldn't have, I don't, I be illiterate right now. I'd seen some of my partners, they really illiterate. And I be fucking with them, but... I'd be thinking about it. if I would have never went to juvenile, I'd be literate. I couldn't write, read, write, none of that shit. Damn. So, all right. So, when you, when you, how, what do you start doing? Like, how do you, what what gets to, uh, what leads to, like, you going to juvenile and all that? And, like, what age do you go to juvenile? I'm a juvenile at 15. Okay. So, between, see, so between 13 and 15, you just, I'm just, you just hustling. hustling. Yeah, I'm hustling. Yeah. I'm going, you know, back and forth shit. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, my ain't pretty much was popular. You know, people knew my mama, so eventually, you know, dude started, you know, he really used to just, the dude that was running, running this set of apartments, you should just give me shit, you know what I'm saying? He'll give me shit and tell me to bring you some money. Sometimes I bring it, sometimes I don't, you know what I'm saying? But he taught me like, one time, he gave me something and I, ain't, and, and, and I ain't paying. So I was looking, I was hungry as a bitch. I'll never forget that shit. I was hungry as a motherfucker. And... I, I seen him and he wouldn't give me nothing. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't give you, he said he told me to give me his money. You know what I'm saying? And I was hungry as a bitch. And I ain't had no way to get no money. If you ain't got no drugs, you ain't got no way to get no money. You gotta figure out how to I'm hungry. Hungry supersedes everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. from that day, I just really like, I don't, I don't try to fuck over people like that. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's gonna, you gonna need somebody somewhere. You know what I'm saying? But now from 13 to 15, really I was hustling all night when I committed my crime. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much. And I don't know, it was some crazy shit. It's crazy shit. So I mean, so what happens? What, what do you end up going to the juvenile thing for? What do they end up catching you doing? 
Nah, is it for I ended up killing somebody. No shit. Yeah. yeah. I, it's something I regret. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, 15 I ain't years old? spoke on it. But yeah, it's something I, it's something I regret. Because it's, it's something, I mean, it was the mentality at the time. You know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't nothing new. But at the same time, I, after after I, I done went to juvenile in different situations, and you know my brother got killed, and I can understand how my mama feel and the hatred she have, and to have somebody, some people hate me like that. You know what I'm saying? And they have a right to hate me like that. You know what I'm saying? But it's something like when you're a kid, and they tell you your country's gonna kick in when you get older. You don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? But that's a, after my brother got killed right before I got out of that. You see, what I'm, I'm talking about like I had a fight. As a matter of fact, I supposed to have been at home because I was coming on the furlough, but a dude from Dallas was fucking with me, and me and him had a fight. You know what I'm saying? I let him get me off my square. I really, I knew he was trying to. You know what I'm saying? Because he knew I was fenced to leave. You know what I'm saying? He was trying, yeah. He yeah. just was yeah. a whole ass nigga, but um, you know, so that happened. So. You know, I had a nephew, you know what I'm saying? I had I put my son, my brother had a two year old, two or three year old son, or some shit like that. So it's like you had decisions to make. You know what I'm saying? You have decisions to make. And that's so, some that's some crazy shit. Man, crazy. so okay, was so was the person, was this another like person your age, like a kid? Nah, he was older. Mm. I was fifteen. He had to be about nineteen or twenty. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He about nineteen. And what was crazy, I don't I really wasn't the I get in the shit with my partners, but I more was my problems in the neighborhood, I had surpassed that fighting and shooting and all that shit because I need to get some money. My situation at home is different from your situation. You know what I'm saying? So my mind was on the money. You know what I'm saying? So, And I had, man, I bought the gun like maybe about an hour before it happened. No shit. No, seriously. So how'd they end up catching you? Uh, when I made it home, uh, it was, I hadn't committed a lot of crimes when I was young. We did a lot of shit. But this time when I made it home, my whole family was on the porch. My mama, my grandma, my auntie, everybody was on the porch. Like, you need to turn yourself in. You know what I'm saying? It was a good decision, though. That fast? I turned Before you even made it home? The next day. That fast. When I made it home, I went to a room. And when I made it home the next morning, like, my whole family was on the porch. So I knew that, oh, you ain't get away with this. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody know you did it. You know what I'm saying? So, boom. You know, I turned myself in. 15 years old. Yeah. And so they mm-hmm. sent you to... Uh... West Dallas. I went to Guinness. I ended up at Guinness. You know what I'm saying? But I did a lot of shit at Guinness. It's still the point to where I did so much growing up and shit at Guinness to like when I, I didn't been at my low point since I've been out, you know, shit. And I didn't set up an email to people because like a lot of people don't understand what, what sometimes counseling in them groups you do, you know what I'm saying? For you, you really, that, what I learned there taught me how to think shit out, man. Like if I want to learn how to think about the, the end outcome, or what I'ma do, I probably would have been and did a whole bunch of shit. You know what I'm saying? But I think about, okay, you got to weigh out your pros and cons before you do something. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I learned a lot of shit there. And it's like, I don't know. I and then I was in the field to where, you know, I talked to kids and I you know, I used to go to they used to take me out of there, I used to go to college, like Sam Marcus and shit, and stand up and talk to the whole criminal justice no shit. class about what I got going on. I was very active in that shit. I was just like, cause it was real to me. You know, my mama used drugs, I did. You know, my story wasn't fake. And I was, you know, and I really was, you know, in the, I went to San Antonio, I was in the halfway house, um, you know, working, doing my thing, doing something different. I really was never gonna leave San Antonio until my brother got killed. You know what I'm saying? My brother got killed, I had to come home and face the, the same situations that I left that I was running from. You see what I'm saying? Because with those type of problems, you can't, at that age, you can't make no sound decision about what you're going to do when your whole family fucked up. You see what I'm saying? So, like, I, I think people get it misconstrued and misunderstand by a street nigga, a real one. You know what I'm saying? You got to sacrifice for this. You see what I'm saying? So that's just how it go. So that's what I had to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. So, okay, so you was in there for how long? Four years. 
Oh well, yeah. So you come out, you're 19 years old. Yeah. But okay, so talk about it because like 18, 19. 18, 19, something like that. Yeah. yeah. But talk about it, even before then though, like growing up, you know, because dead end, you got hog over there, fat patty, everybody. Like who's some of the people yeah. over there that you just really kind of growing up with? I grew up with. I grew up with. It was two fractions. My young mo, the people when I hung with my young dudes, they was on the the the, the, the stupid shit. But when I hang with my brother in Hawknell, they was on some listening music, play tonk for money. Um, you know, my brother was on some player shit. He wasn't on that shooting, shooting, bang, bang bullshit. So it was, it was so much going on, man, to where, like, you couldn't focal point, like, what the fuck you was doing, man. But if I had to say to somebody, like, you know, shit, man, it was going down, man. We, I mean, like, what you see now wasn't there. We had swimming pools everywhere. Hmm. We had a whole court, uh, whole court basketball in the leans, whole court basketball in the gates, whole court basketball in the Sunwood, whole court in Esperanza. We gonna play the people from over there. We, you know, it was so many shit to do. We gonna go at, we might go at, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night and everybody jump in the pool. Come out the pool, everybody walk over there, play basket. It was, it was fun than a motherfucker, man. Because it was a lot of people. But at the same time, you yeah, know, still you had, had drugs going yeah. on. You had grown people killing people too. You know, like, motherfuckers coming up dead. You had Jamaicans back then. You know, so it was wild, 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 man. It was real, real wild, man. It was real, real wild, man. I can remember them times, man. Yeah, so okay, you got Hawkins, Fat Pat, anybody else that, that was like in a DEA music, you know what I'm saying, involved that, we fuck that with? you was growing up back with? Back then? Because who was it? Was Ron G and all that over there? Like, who else was nah, over there? see, Ron them would stay in, like, they stayed in the houses. But when I got out in 93, like, 380 D, like 380 D and them stayed in, 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 in Pearl, Pearl Homes. Home. They stayed in houses that surrounded the apartments. But you got to realize that was the middle class back in them days around, all that was middle class. Because really, in that shit, our apartments was nice. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no ghetto or nothing. But um, now nah, they stay like right there, you know what I'm saying? Right on the next streets and shit like that. So you get at 93, what's going down? Man. Cause I this, mean, this shit, this, 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 it's still in. going down, you know what I mean? It, 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 it's going well, down, it, it's going it's down. It's the crack still thing? It's but crack all, all my friends locked up, you know what I'm saying? I went as a juvenile. They stayed out my two, three more years doing all this crazy, you know. So when I get out in 93, you know, partner got 45, he got 25, he got the, That's you know, saying, everybody time, gone. They, older, they probably picked yeah. up real years at this yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's either you dealing with the stick them and hawk them, which is older, you know what I'm saying, or you dealing with, uh, like my little homeboy, Lil Black and, and uh, Big J and all them, they was a little younger than me. They might be two years younger than me. So I was getting out, I was kind of older, you know what I'm saying? And my brother had just got killed. My brother was real known too, so you know, you're getting a lot of love from different different situations. But uh, my partner picked me up. So man, they picked, they picked, I had an apartment like on Bel Air, paid, rent paid for six months, all that shit. When you got out? Yeah, I had like, I had like about 4,000 in the bank. I had my rent paid for six months. They used to give me like fifty dollars a week just to eat. You know what I'm saying? Like juvenile, they really set you up to be to not go back to what you were doing. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. But you nine out of ten, we gonna choose that. Well, my homeboy picked me up, man. He jamming screw. Hey, I'm, I hear something. But I'm in the back seat. This is back when they used to take the back seat out of that dumb ass shit. Um, he in the slab or what? Nah, he just in a regular ass car. With a bunch of music, but he jamming at three in the morning, right? But it's so loud, it's hurting my ear. It's like I, I ain't smoked, I ain't listen. I'm fresh out of jail, man. I'm, I'm like fresh, fresh. So I can't handle the weed. I can't handle the music. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm thinking. So, so he that get out and put the he put you put you on the square. I'm hours. riding with him. Yeah, I'm getting high. <laughs> I'm in the back seat. He bumping this damn about two fifteens in my motherfucking ear. Um. The you music know, the slow music down. slow. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> man, I'm scared. You know what I'm saying? I ain't seen no post. You feel me? I'm thinking you I'm fresh back. out like, man, I can't ah, go back. Man, get your fuck. <laughs> I can't go back. It's just 
normally when you see a cop or something, you know, you're going to be like, shit, you got little nerves. So, um, man, he ended up dubbing that motherfucker for me, man. So you liked it when you heard it the first time? Yeah, but my ears was hurting, though. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he dubbed that bitch, man. I must, and I was out there way out like there in that apartment. All I was jam was three in the morning, man. My favorite shit was was when he bring Scarface. He had the the um the sugar free beat going. I'm sugar free. He had sugar free beat going. He got had MC8 Modest Society. It's getting real quick, but what he had that bumping with the beat bumping. With that, then once that verse go out, he switched to the Scarface. Here it comes, fool. I play the game where it's no rule. I'm on yeah. the cut. He go to that. While he got all this shit playing, sugar free and all this shit going on. Then he go back to a verse. Uh, um, uh, uh, I'm talking about, man, that was the coldest shit I ever heard, man. For real, right now to the day, I never heard him mix nothing like that. You can say three in the morning, but it ain't that one. You know what I'm saying? So you heard an early version of three in the morning. The real saying. three in the morning. You know what I'm saying? The first one he ever made, like, he had to have three turntables to do that shit. Mm. That was probably one of that motherfucker, man. It got some shit on there, man. It got some shit on there. Man, okay. So when you get out, then what you so what you start doing? I mean, you, you start hustling when you get out of like what you doing? Yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> I, I was yeah. I figured out how to get my money out the out the damn thing. Bought me a little shit. You know, shit was going cool. Um, shit was going cool. I was my partner. He dead now, nah, man. Um, named Reb. He crippled. He had, ended up getting shot. You know what I'm saying? I'm one of my best friends. Like, shit. Uh, I stayed with him when I was like I used to stay with him and his mama. You know, 40, when I was trying to go to school, I might be at his house, you know, for shit a month. month so, you, so you did you? I ain't make... going home till y'all kick me out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You got food here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you all, um, you got them taking me to school. It's some normal shit going on. Yeah, here. I'm, I like you it here. Yeah. <laughs> well, so one night, that was shit funny. I tell my mom about this shit all the time. So one one night, about two, three in the morning, daddy kicked me out, man. Yeah, hey, daddy kicked me out. I had to ride the bike. I had to ride the bike home. I had somewhere to go. I see my grandma just moved out the hood. Yeah. And I didn't want to go. You know what I'm saying? But hell yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, so you started hustling and all that, man. Yeah, man. I started hustling at his house. Okay, so everything cool. Shit shit jumping, cool. That's cool. why you got kicked out, because you over there hustling. Oh. Is this the friend you said the dad kicked you out of? Nah, he kicked me out when I was 13, I was 13 14. Back then. Okay, I'm talking about a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I had my own spot when I got yeah, out. Yeah, so at this spot here, you hustling. And this is a. Uh, I'm hustling at his spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, until my other partner came and fucked that up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then I went back to the. But my partner's from the. Like the younger dudes, like T Bone and, and um, Lil Black and them and shit, they would come over there and visit me and try to get me to come back over there or pick me up and shit like that. But shit, I ended up my mama moved down there, so I ended up going back down there. So that's and I and my brother's baby mother gave me an apartment over down there. And then when she did that shit, man, we got that motherfucker jumping in. And so where was this from that? Where was this apartment? That you this said? is in the Leans. This is in the Leans. So now you in the Leans. Yeah, and this is my eleven nine eleven days. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um And this is what year, like ninety three, ninety four? Ninety three, ninety four. Ninety three, ninety four. Yeah. Yeah, 9394. So you hustling, you getting the lanes, and is this, is this when the shit just really just start jumping when you get over there? Shit, I always would jump it. But yeah. yeah. Well, I'm saying for you personally, like yeah, when you really yeah. start getting your, you know what I'm saying, your money yeah, and shit. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. That's when I call the stretch and not going to jail, put it like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For real. Had a nice um, run. Yeah, that's where that's where everything went down. Yeah. You know so saying? you getting money and like what you what you doing, man? Like you getting before I mean before DEA and all that, like, what you getting cars and all that? What type of stuff? We, you? It's still a struggle though. You know what I'm saying? So it's, so I get out and these dudes younger, they look younger than me, but the game didn't change. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no, you know, no rock game going on. You know what I'm saying? It's socializing, um, you know, knowing this nigga, nigga, this nigga want that, that nigga want that. You know what I'm saying? And they hit me on to that. You know what I'm saying? They hit me on to that. So, shit, we just really just like party, man. You know what I'm saying? We was just happy to have, we had no furniture. We went from no furniture to a little furniture to just, I mean, we gradually, me and um, 
me, 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 Black and T-Bone, we gradually kind of like as kids, you know, had our first spot, you know what I'm saying? And everybody just started fucking with us, you know mm. what I'm saying? Sticks started coming, then that's when Hawks started coming. And then, you know, they'll come up there and pat you on the back. So that make you like, shit, that pat on the back made you like, keep going, the stick had to slab, you know what I'm saying? Okay, talk about stick one, man, because I hear about him a lot, man. Like, he sound like he was just he real, a real nigga. Yeah. He a real nigga, man. A real nigga, but you know, I don't know. Stick, stick, and Hawk is, is is pretty much, I I say they parallel, on um, far as the way they came up and things. But Stick did dibble and dabble into hustling, you know what I'm saying. But he was smart enough to where when when friction came, he he just you know he don't fuck with that, you know what I'm saying. Turned his life over to God because that's his natural. He was going against himself when he was doing the other shit, yeah. but he was a good nigga though. Yeah. Good nigga. Yeah. Good nigga. Stick was a good nigga. He was like, when I got back in 93, he, you know, he was doing what he, you know, he was doing what he was doing. You know, he was kind of holding the hood down pretty much, especially the leans at that particular time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. He taught me a lot, too. And he took us to Screw House. That's who took me to Screw House. Stick one took you to Screw House. Well, I went with Hawk, but Hawk wouldn't have never went if he wasn't with Stick, you know what I'm saying? So... Stick started, you know, kind of like buddying up. He was like the first ones to start buddying up with Screw and trying to get in the house and, you know what I'm saying? He do shit like buying shoes and, you know, you know, Stick was a flamboyant type of cool dude, you know what I'm saying? He really like, he was the glue to a lot of shit. Like, dead in and Hillwood being cool, you can you can give Stick a little credit. Because he going to have... He gonna have people from different hoods coming in there, kicking it and feeling safe. You know what I'm saying? You gonna see the player side of everybody from different places and study like, like nah, niggas just wanna kill each other. But I understand they, they pain, and, you know what I'm saying? But right now, it's so fucked up, man. You can't do nothing out here. It's a crazy time. And it was crazy back then, but to be honest with you, the life expectancy of a, of a young motherfucker right now, man, ain't too. Ain't I don't too think I want to be twenty again, yeah. and live the life that like I that. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't even be cool, get you some money, and be left alone. Somebody gonna try to shoot you, rob you. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know if it's not. A, I don't mean, I mean, it's too much money in the street for it. But at the same time, that's just how how it is, man. I mean, it's just crazy, man. You can't even really be cool. Man. You really got to be on your, you got to be on your P's and Q's or you got to be, you know, this gangster that you have to be. You know what I'm saying? And you might not want to be that. But, you know, you got to survive. Yeah, yeah. Damn, man. So, okay, so Stick One is kind of the man. But th doesn't he kind of get locked up early, though? Yeah, he got locked up in 90, 94. 94. I think by 94. 94, 95, some, some, some up in that area. You know what I'm saying? He got locked up. He ain't do too much time though. He did like four years. Hmm. Cause he wasn't really the one who did the shit. But you know, it straightened him up. You know, God put 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 what what he got to put on you to get your mind right. You know, if he um if you believe in that aspect of things, I believe it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, it ain't nothing that I would take back that I went through besides um you know. Taking somebody's life. That's it. Everything else kind of like strengthened me to be who I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, y'all go to Screw House. The first time you go to Screw House. Mm -hmm. uh, you said you go with Hawk or you go with Stick One? No, I went with Hawk. I don't know. I don't know. Because so sometimes, I don't know. Hawk might. Nah, Hawk had a, had a car, Thunderbird. Uh, nah, I think I went with Hawk. I can't remember which one. But I went and put my my list in with one of them two. You know what I'm saying? I went back checking on my own. But one of them two, uh, you know, sometimes I might go with the stick going over there. Boom, I'm going to ride with you. Go check on my tape. Get over there. I ain't taping. Yeah, no. So that's how it used to be. You would drop your list off and then you had yeah, to go back and man. check on you your tape. You just got to keep on knocking on the door, asking, man. Talk you about that. How how, how, when you, that met, when you met Screw, shit, how was though. that? You know what I'm saying? Like, how, what's your impression of him? Like, you meet DJ Screw, like, been him. Okay, he this wasn't, is the man. Okay, but see, you got to realize we grew together. 
Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Now he was who he was. Now I ain't gonna for us like um public publicly. You know what I'm saying? Like Screw was just doing his thing. I ain't really just know you had to give everybody had to. Like I'm saying, Stick talked his way in the house. You know what I'm saying? Like really you had to give him your list through his burglar bars mm. and just keep knocking on the door and checking to see if he got your tape. So you just dropped the list off and that was it. That's it, man. And one day you come to that bitch and he got your tape. <laughs> he just happened to have the tape. You just That's said. where the word man come from. I'm telling you, man, this is where man come from. When you get that goddamn tape and you don't know what's on it, how he did it, none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So he hauled off and uh, you putting it in and all of a sudden he drop one, he bring it back and do whatever he do. You like, that's when you like, God, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, that's a beautiful feeling though. Back then, when I came in, it was when I got in, it, it was cool too. But that checking and getting your tape, and you don't want the tape, and I'm finna go to the apartments, I'm finna bump my tape because it's like when Hawk finally got a tape, he come up there bump his tape. It's Hawk's so, it's Hawk's first tape. Uh, yo, okay, y'all first Stick tape. Had, uh, the tapes went like this for me. I heard Big George with that tape in nine three. Wait, wait, wait. What happened? The three in the morning. I heard three in the morning. Nine three. You said with Big George. Big George, my partner. That's that's the dude name I was riding. Okay. With. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, then you went through all that. Probably by nine four. Whatever. Stick had got a tape and he brought it up there. He used to you know jamming in the house and shit. Then Hawk finally got him a tape. Then when Hawk got the tape, I wanted I I wanted to figure out how to get me a tape. You know but y'all not rapping on these tapes. These just mixes. No. 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 Rapping came by like one day I was making my tape, popped up, smoked up. And um me, Kiki, and Hawk was there. And it was the wee hours of the night. So I'm like shit. We Hold on, wait, wait. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We, 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 we um we um so we just wrote we wrote it this time. He put the beat the five on the beat or whatever. So we wrote it. Yeah, I wrote the rap. Yeah, we wrote that rap. That one we did there, we didn't we didn't freestyle. That one a freestyle. Everybody wrote that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it came out a little different. So shit. After we wrote that, I got the tape. You know what I'm saying? We jamming it or whatever. Um. And one day, Screw called us and said he had he had he had a concert. You know what I'm saying? But they wanted us to perform that song at the concert, and he called us. But it was off of a Screw tape. You feel what I'm saying? So we were playing around, so we were singing it though, fucking and seeing me hawking on, me hawking and Kiki was together, you know what I'm saying? So shit, man, we went did it, it was at the, I think it was at Boomerang. We did that and seen the response, you know what I'm saying? Then, then Ron put it in, like he had, Botany Boys, I like to give them a lot of, you know what I'm saying, a lot of credit. Um, Botany Boys had dropped Botany Boys. And I'm I'm listening to it, putting it on motherfuckers. They really made me realize and say, man, you really can make a tape. You know what I'm saying? Like really make a a, real they album. made yeah. that tape. Yeah. They made that tape. That that kind of pioneered some shit. You know what I'm saying? It made it put it in our mind. Matter of fact, these, on Red was the first one make. He made Son hit the fade. You know what I'm saying? That was a little connection him and uh, Run had going on. So really, if it weren't for Bonnie Boys, or if it weren't for Run, you know, doing his thing. We wouldn't have never said we're going to form a group. Because he really, like, you know, you know, put it in our mind to be a group or whatever. Because we was just kicking it. We just made a tape. You know, we ain't on that shit. Kiki was on it, but me and Hawk weren't on it. You know what I'm saying? How do you how do y'all meet Kiki? Kiki was hanging with Stick. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Stick brought Kiki to the lanes. Y'all meet Kiki so he, he really brought... He brought Kiki to the Leans and pretty much the Screw House, I think. Don't quote me on that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he went over it, but I know he got to fucking with Stick Heavy, and then he got to go in the Screw House. Or they were fucking with each other around the same time. Stick brought Key to the Hood, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, young nigga. Back. Stick going to gravitate to anybody live in any neighborhood, whether it's female, whether she, he going to try to bring it at you and fuck with you and, you know what I'm saying? He gonna bring you around. You know what I'm saying? That's how Lil Gaylin, like Lil Gaylin, they them niggas was in high school. You know what I'm saying? He will have them in the hood. You know this this. Tell my Gator hood. from uh, Cloverland. No yeah. shit. Yeah, that little nigga had a slab, man, like a motherfucker. That motherfucker ain't one bullshit. They like one nobody bullshitting back then though. 
Like they was in high school with slabs though. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Um What kind of cars you having around this time though? I, I ain't really I ain't really get no car to buy nine four. I got to I got seven deuce. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I really was gonna buy a stick car because he had got he had already had this case. You know what I'm saying? But I seen Pat. You was gonna buy and, a slam? Yeah. Mm. That bitch was nice. Um I seen Pat in, in 380D back to back. They was in Pat had a red had their red seven deuce and three A D had a blue one. You know what I'm saying? And I just wanted to get in that line, man. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was another nigga selling one. I bought I bought it I bought it in paint. But before mine came out the shop, I bought me and well me and my partner Kiwi, we ended up buying pets. You know what I'm saying? We bought pets. Then my partner Junior got out of jail. We bought three eighties. You know what I'm saying? So we had all three of them bitches. So what color was yours? Because I got Mine was green. green. So you had a green one. Yeah, they ended up stealing it though. No sure? Yeah, yeah, they ended up stealing. Wow. Yeah, mine was green. I had that, you know. At three eighty D motherfucking ass, man. I went to the store on his step side one day, man. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't heard know about if you told that side. story. Nah, uh-uh, go but ahead. see, like we young, and we 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 was riding like, you know, Cadillac, Sam dude, slam bags. He jump out with a with a Chevy step side. That's that's a whole nother, some grown man shit. You know what I'm saying? And I drove that bitch one day. And the rimming in that, you know what I'm saying? You know how that bitch, man. Yeah, look, yeah. And he would hit that corner doing that shit. And I went and got me one of them. You know what I'm saying? I ain't one guy one of them motherfuckers. I like I had them too. Well, I had that, and then I had some, I had some, I had a lot of shit, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk about uh, if you had to describe Fat Pat and Hawk, and then them different. You know what I'm saying? Difference in the two. Um, Pat Pat was groovy. Pat was who he was. Hawk was who he was. And the beauty of they thing is when they get together, bro, they just rank on each other and laugh like a motherfucker, man. Man, I wish we really record this one time, man. But Pat was in there sleep. So Hawk told me, come in, come in, come in. So he peeling the cover off this nigga feet. <laughs> this nigga shit jacked up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's snowing like a motherfucker. So we dying laughing at this shit, man. But they had a beautiful relationship because they didn't have to be up under. They had the same relationship me and my brother had, to be honest with you. We didn't have to be under each other, but then when we were around each other, it's no little brother, big brother shit going on. You know, it's just, you know, they had a cool relationship, but but Pat was always away from the hood, though. He never was really, like, in the hood. Like, he gone, he he, he gone, you know. I guess that was his escape. Like, the, the Kojaks and, and all them people who had nice families that, you know, had cars, you know, he gonna get out the, at the neighborhood, go ride with them, you know, because he had the tapes, you know what I'm saying? But Hawk was in there laughing, running. Hey, man, I ain't going to bullshit you, man. That boy, <laughs> this, we was little niggas, right? That boy Hawk, he had a job. I don't know where he was. He was like in the 12th grade or something. You know, he had like after school shit. But the minute that nigga stepped his foot off that bus, in the front on MLK, he had to take out running all the way to the eyes. We're going to chase his motherfucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> but we laughing because it's funny because he going to take out running. He a big old nigga. So he laughing and running and running. We chasing this nigga all through this motherfucker, man. <laughs> man, we had some good times, though, man. I ain't going to lie, though, man. We used to chase that nigga ass. Because he thought he was fast and smooth and quick and all this. <laughs> Ain't lie, man. That was funny. That was, I had a lot of funny times with that dude, man. Yeah, so you was closest to Hawk. You was telling me. Yeah, that, man. Man. Hawk was really, that was more so you got. That was my brother. Yeah, yeah. In real life, like, when I, the whole time I was locked up, he was the one I was going to call, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, real shit. Like, if it's Mother's Day and, you know, my mama down or something, I can tell him, man, go take my mama some flowers, just that and that. He going to go do it. You know what I'm saying? Or he going to be like, I'm going to do it in the morning. I'll be there. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was, that was a real, that was real tough. Real tough. Make you feel like, God damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, what else going to go on? And mm. I had talked that when uh, Screw Then Screw died. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and me, and Ron, me and Ron was talking about that t today. Before we came up here, like, what 
what what what you know what our life would have been like if you know shit wouldn't happen this wouldn't happen that wouldn't happen and when you all locked up this one would have lived it, it, it'll be it'll be um richer dead you know what i'm saying because the serb really was going down there like kill you i was already having little minor strokes and shit Okay, talk about that, man. How so? Do you, when you get out of jail, everybody? I mean, when you get out of uh, out the juvenile thing, you know what I'm saying? Do you get introduced to serve? Like how early do you get introduced to serve? Uh-uh. Serve one on, serve one I did. You know, niggas was still drinking forties. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, but to be honest with you, man, I'm trying to think of somebody else, but like that, what that would propel the motherfucker to really just like really get some money. When I started selling syrup, you know what I'm saying? Like, we used to get cases and cases and cases. Like, the first place that you can pull up in South Park, like, it had a couple of more other dudes, but like, back in the day when they first got crunky, you first got getting drank, you gonna come up there and get a four or a deuce or whatever from, from us, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of young niggas weren't selling drink. They ain't know what drink was. Hmm. So, really, that shit, that nigga was one of the first. Drink me. And like, what year is this? It's like 94. 94. Yeah, it's like 94. Mm. Case, $800. Mm. 800 bucks. A bar. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit. We was down the wheel. Man, so I got how out. You even, how you even get put on to that to be like, well, shit, all right, we gonna They brought it up there one day. I really ain't like it. But really, 3HD put me on a lot of that shit, too. Because it used to be with that boom for him. We were putting it boom for him, but Screw really put us on the soda in the in the drink. But I think it was Kiwi the first one put me on it. You know what Who I'm was Kiwi? That's a name I didn't heard before. Talk about Kiwi. Oh, they're just a nigga from the hood, be around, you know what I'm saying? Laugh and, and kick it kick it tight. You know, what I'm you know, be around. Him and Hawk stayed together, you know, him and um Kiki stayed together, all of them stayed together and shit. Yeah, yeah. He just a nigga in the hood, man. Like three eight had been around. You know, we've been around each other forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, okay, so you're talking about the, uh, so the syrup. So you're selling the syrup. So when you start selling it, how, are you just like, well, I'm just selling it, and then you start sipping it, or you was already sipping it, and then you just start sipping, selling it? I was sipping it and then selling it. Hmm. Sure. I was sipping and selling it. was so cheap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was real cheap. Profit margin still going to be there. Yeah, and then you got the screw, the screw, screw error. You know what I'm saying? You gotta bring a paint to screw house. You might do that. I had, you know, like I had to take two paints deep. You got to have like two paints, cause this nigga drinks. <laughs> man, I got out of the hospital, man. Screw put a, a eight in a two liter. And man, I, I'm, I'm sitting there drinking it, but that's one of the times I feel pressured. <laughs> like somebody pressured me to like, you know, I'm sitting in the car like drink that, you know what I'm saying? And man, I was fucked up, man. You say when you I got out the hospital, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I had got shot, and I had a tube in my side. Now nah, this shit, this nigga didn't put me on. Man, we we bought the paint now, nah, man. Me and Screw ain't had that paint no more than a good hour and a half, man. Screw up all that much soda water in the paint and drank it. Mm. Yeah, he drank. He I don't know, man. He was drinking, man. I might drink a six or something you know what i'm saying and he's drinking he's drinking he was drinking man he was drinking damn so all right uh talk about uh when y'all start to actually do the dea thing because cause solo was yeah. saying you were saying you got shot he was telling the story about like the whole mm-hmm. thing about uh with the sign and the guy with kiki and want to get yeah, signed yeah. or something like that yeah they had like a, i don't know what their situation was you know what i'm saying to be honest with you because uh at that time, Kiki wasn't letting his left hand, his right hand over left hand, or however you go you twist that. But I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't think Kiki was on sign with him. But you know, at that particular time, you gotta understand, you're a young nigga he trying to, trying to survive without doing wrong. You feel me? Because he had some shit going on, and you know, he had his dream going on, and that's one thing I can give him credit for. He stepped out on his dream. You know what I'm saying? Like if a lot of us was just stepped out on our dream and started continuing to doing the bullshit to substitute the bullshit, then you probably would have made it. Your talent would have got you where you got. So at that particular time, that's what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? Trying to venture out. Because you got to understand, we're young. We don't even know what we're doing. We don't know shit. We don't know nothing about nothing. The only thing we know is we're going to put our own money up 
and we going one day yeah, we're just going to like the studio a, yeah we going to and we going to the studio we might get an eight hour block man and don't make shit in there listening to music smoking weed um trying to come up with some shit so when like, y'all first start going talk about who's the original people that you say okay our vision for da right now when we start this thing who are the people it, it wasn't really ain't had no name or nothing yeah you know what i'm saying what, we was whatever it was music. yeah okay yeah. yeah it was um me hawk run um like i say run got the son hit the fade beat from uh from red and took us to um j2 studio fresh the good dude named fresh he had worked on um a ball and jim jg and them type projects and shit um he took us like we did sign at the fade we was coming where really kiki came up with the concept or we was fucking around coming from the all-star game with san antonio mm. and we was all riding four deep you know what i'm saying we were just fucking around a lot of our music got made when we were just the all-star moving game around. with san antonio 97. nah or 96. no san antonio san antonio yeah, that's when jordan wore the white patent leathers nah, and all that. Nah, we was there yeah, I don't know if it was nine six. I got shot. No, man, we been making that. We started making it at least nine five. Sun hit the fade was the first song y'all did though. Sun the fade was the first song. Oh shit! At least nine. No, I'm gonna back it up deeper than it was by nine five. Nine nine by nine five, man. Nine five or early nine six. Because, you know, time moving. I'm thinking this a lot of shit didn't happen, but really time moving fast. We did a lot in a small amount of time. Yeah. But I don't know. It had to be like, it had to be like 9.5, 9.6. It wasn't 9.7. That's yeah. for sure. Unless they went back up there. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it, it might be. I might have my years off, but that was the year. I remember Jordan wearing white patent leathers, though. That mm -hmm. was that year. No, nah, we went to that. Time, All of yeah. us went to that motherfucker. Yeah, matter of fact, I, we a matter of fact, we got some pictures from now because because Latroy was with us. No oh, uh, shit. Yeah. So you been knowing Latroy since back then. Yeah. It was I, when I when I did what I what I did when I was a youngster. I was I was at Troy's spot. He had like like a spot like it wasn't a spot to where you just do a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? But if you wanted to go to sleep, lay your head. I went up there to go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no drug spot, no nothing like that. I went up there to go to sleep because I had the nervous. It was like the wee hours in the morning. You know what I'm saying? But now nah, I've been, no, I know Troy brother. You know, see Troy brother ran with us. He doing like three life sentences. Man. Yeah, I heard he was. Yeah, 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 he ran with us. See, that's the that's the difference in the the age bracket. You see what I'm saying? You got Troy cool. That might be my brother age. You got two years under him. It's his brother and us. We doing stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? So. But down at, at this time, though, are you seeing like Scarface and all that around that time? Scarface was there. And some matter of fact, the 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 set of apartments I, I, that I when they sitting on that Cadillac in them apartments, them the apartments. That's what that was the that what was going on when I went when when I was a young nigga and I went to jail. Hmm. The Scarface movement, Lil Troy, he was back there doing you know what I'm saying he was doing his thing. So matter of fact, if I would listen to him. Before I right before I went to jail and I was working on this project, I probably wanted to miss prison altogether because he was trying to teach me the business. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to he wanted to work the whole project for a certain percentage, but I didn't understand percentage or or you know how I don't know nothing. just the music business and in, in how that even made sense to do That's that. That's how he came back with want to be a baller and ended up going platinum, fucking with our movement. You know what I'm saying? Fucking with. Fucking with, he had been doing music forever, and he really like always had a different type of music. If you go back and listen to people he had after Scarface, they was more of a rapper, rapper, rapper. They want no, he couldn't see the fat pets and shit like that. He couldn't see that to his start. He saw, he, I think he heard, he told me he heard his son hit the fade, and that's when he really like, oh, that nigga sound good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he tried to teach me. You know, he tried, he tried now, yeah, but I got, matter of fact, we had an office and shit. I was letting him teach me. We had an office together off on um, 16, right by the Bennigans, mm -hmm. where the Bennigans were. Mm -hmm. We had an office and everything, I got shot. When I got shot, that kind of, I didn't want to fuck with nobody. I wasn't paying no motherfucking bills. You know, I ain't, I'm in straight up. Talk, I mean, talk about that whole situation, you know what I'm saying? Like, what even led to that whole thing? Man, to be honest with you, I was on a whole nother mission. 
I was on a mission doing some other shit, and I stopped by uh, Rhino and Randy and them to, to grab me something to sip on, and I ran into Mike D. Run into Mike D. He, uh, we got to do a project for ESG at Solo House, you know what I'm saying? Like right now, and I'm like, when? And he like, right now, you know what I'm saying? This, that, and the third. So that detoured me. I got the drink. I went to, um, I went to Solo House. So I'm at Solo. I'm on the phone with ESG, to be honest with you, when all the commotion jump off. But Pat and, um, uh, Pat Mahomes, my name Bone, they went to go get some solo wars and different shit. We finna vibe out in there and you know what I'm saying? And gonna knock this song yeah. out. Cause ESG in jail, so we trying to make sure we do everything, you know, keep him floating and shit where we had going. And um I'm on the phone with E and this nigga well, I seen one other nigga that I mean, he must have called that nigga, you know what I'm saying? And he came in there tripping. And he hit me, you know what I'm saying? He so, just stole love on you. He ain't say no words. He ended up hit me because I ended up because he really like he really like I don't know what the fuck he was on. To be honest with you, I don't know what the fuck he was on or what the fuck they had going on. But I wasn't for none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not giving nobody nothing. You know I had a you know I made a couple of mistakes with my arrogance and shit. You know what I'm saying? I could have gave a nigga three hundred dollars and missed that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, man, fuck you. I ain't giving you shit. So he thought you owed him money? He he did. He took us to do something. I think it, we did. Our, nah, Troy took me to do my DVAs and all that shit. He took me to do something that was frivolous. He was trying to work. Him and Kiki had some shit going on. And he was trying to work for me a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Through day. And he felt like I owed him $300 for some shit he did. And so when I was over there, he hit me. But I don't even know how he knew I was there. But he hit me, and we started squabbling or whatever, however the situation may be. He went to the car. You know what I'm saying? He went to the car and got his gun. I guess he, uh, Mike D was with me. And he ended up, I don't know where he ended up. But um, he came back with his gun and shit. So, you know what I'm saying? I, don't, I really ain't feel like he was going to shoot me. And he ended up shooting me in the leg, and then he shot me in my stomach. You know what I'm saying? But... I mean, I feel like if I would have ran, he probably killed me. You know how a nigga would be yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? If you run, nigga might bust out 2,000 shots. Clip, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, 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 might bust the whole clip on. But, you know, I survived it. Damn. So you say after that, you was like, man, I ain't fucking with none of this shit. My life just spun out. Really, after I came back from San Antonio and different shit, my life kind of, after I got shot, my life kind of just spun out of control on, um, you know, trying to make sure I handle this, do that, you know, a lot of shit. Like, right before I, I had just got it under control and to finish the album and doing what we need to do when I got locked up. But when I got shot and shit, it was just a lot of shit going on, man. You know what I'm saying? A lot, a lot of bullshit going on. A lot of bullshit. Yeah. So, but at the same time, y'all doing this album, you, at this time, you got Kiki, you got Pokey, you got mm -hmm. Hawk. And so, but Fat Pat and Mike D and Three Two, they was doing Southside Players yeah. over there. Though it was like you know somewhat yeah. of a divide kind of. They was it was really like um, it was really like a little competition pretty much at first. You know what I'm saying? Then we had a concert one night, and I remember how fucked this line up. But I, how um, Pat, Mike D, and um, Three Two went on before us, and you know we had never heard Breaking Concrete. Um, they had um, uh, 10 Keys on the street. Um, they had some shit, you know what I'm saying? So we ain't had shit but um, Sun at the Fade and we had Down in H-Town, you know what I'm saying? But them niggas went on before us and just like tore that bitch up, you know what I'm saying? Like we looking at them, like, I'm looking like, damn, they ready. You know, cause it was a, it was a competition up to the end. Cause I remember riding to the fucking place we listening to our shit, and they must have been listening to their shit, and we feeling like we finna wreck some shit, and they feel like they, but they won that one though. But even we eventually um, just end up merging shit together, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who who was decision was to just say, all right, man, let's just go ahead and come together, man. We, man, I, I really, I really had that. Well, me and Mike D were fucking around pretty much, like. And me and Mike D were fucking around pretty much, so that's how it came about. You know what I'm saying? Because Mike D had the music. He, it, Mike D really had the music for Southside Players. 
he was really the focal point, you know what I'm saying, the boss man in that situation. So, um, and him and him and little Troy fucked around tough. So that's how he ended up, me and him ended up being around each other. And, um, and you know, different shit, man. Money situations, um, different shit. Us kicking it, you know what I'm saying? And we ended up merging it like that. But I think that slowed both of us down, you know what I'm saying? It really fucked up some shit. What you mean? It it slowed them down and slowed us down. Because now when you're doing something, it ain't three people you got to get on You got to consider everybody. You got to get yeah. all us on cue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes everybody, like I'm saying, we might be at the studio waiting on somebody and they ain't came. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was, it was. No shit. Okay, it it talk, slowed okay. us down. Hmm. Then, it did, then everybody divided out. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you listen to our music, really, like, it's a lot of competition in it. You're going to hear Kiki and, and Pat predominantly on every hook. Because when the beat come on, they want the hook. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they going to they yeah. gonna get it. And but when you Was had it a spoken two, thing, or it was just like it they was just kind of going? They was hungry. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's even at Screw House, man. The two most classic shit I ever seen at Screw House. Was Kiki and Duke battling Javon and the other girl that used to be on ESG Project? Yeah. I'm talking about, man, they was going at it on some freestyle shit, back and forth, back. You got two girls and two boys, and they was going back and forth, back and forth in that kitchen, man, some classic shit. Like, if we had a camera back then, that's some classic shit. I'm talking about super classic shit. And the first time I ever heard Poke Rap, classic shit. So do you hear him, when's the first time you hear him rap? Is it- I was outside the house, but I knew they was trying to get him the mic, right? And I never had met him, never seen him, nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really like, oh, fuck that word. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see. Man, that nigga got to spitting on them. I say, damn. That nigga was hard in the bitch. Like, right now, today, I think that more than anything, motherfucker want to hear a poker album, man. Yeah. Like, that would do the city a, 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 a grave motherfucking, uh, he need, we need that, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it, but like I say, when you're touching shit like that, you probably need to touch it at the right time with the right shit, the right producers. We got a lot of good producers out there right now. You know what I'm saying? A lot of good producers. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think the city will be like they'll get behind it yeah, on sure. our tip. You know what I'm saying? On on what screw? You know, people dropping out of screw. I think that I think that you'll get some bangers out of it, motherfucker. Yeah. What's What's the last uh, memory you had with Screw? Because I mean, he died while you were uh, locked up. But what's the last memory you had with him before you had, before you went in and everything? He He picked me up. I like. Right before I got locked up, me and Screw was on business 24-7. Me, Screw, and, and Pat. Me, 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 so Screw what y'all talking about? What kind of stuff y'all had going on? Um, he had some shit. Like, I was really, like, trying to stick with him. You know, shit was going crazy. Like, Kiki had the jam down situation. Um, Pat had the, the rec shop situation on the cool. You know what I'm saying? But he still was doing what he had to do with the DA and moving around however he was doing. He was just keeping people out of his business pretty much. Um... And I had got shot, so Screw, you know, he used to pick me up and shit. You know what I'm saying? He used to tell me some of the shit he had going on. He wasn't moving too fast. But, you know, a motherfucker that's a rapper that's trying to make it and shit going on, you trying to move right now. You ain't trying to talk about waiting on nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, and on top of that, we was never understanding that, oh, I'm a rap for Screw. Screw was Screw, and we was doing shit somewhere else, and it just came together. And he supported it when, you know what I'm saying? You had to bring a rector to screw, but he wasn't part of the process of saying that, um, oh, we're going to form a, a label. He had his own thing going on. But one thing he, he always told me and, and tried to understand that he ain't merging with nobody. You know what I'm saying? He going to figure it out. It's going to take him a long time or however you might feel. Like, you ain't really understand his moves. You think he moving slow, but he moving strategic to get what he want and he wanted it the way he wanted it, you know what I'm saying? And that's what we was on, you know what I'm saying? I was trying to stay um, close to him because it's like shit that they was paying for. They was offering to look for Screw for a magazine. 
and we might pay to get in there. Hmm. Like they was paying to get on what that was on. Um, like street flavor and it was another magazine that was floating back in the day you know what i'm saying that you would actually pay for the cover or pay for this but they gonna get that to him for free like a motherfucker you know what i'm saying so now he was he was he was doing the store he was trying to get that the building up so we went at my last memory he picked me up you know what i'm saying we drunk that fucking uh paint um we went up to the shop it wasn't open yet but he was just showing me the, sh the shit that he had going everything. on, yeah. you, know, you know what I'm saying? I never seen it open. I went to prison, but um, that's a, that was the last time I seen it. So I, right. but when you were, uh, you said you things kind of start spiraling out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Towards the end, like t what were you kind of getting into towards the end? Like what kind of led up to you getting locked up? You know, I was already time? getting like followed and shit. Like when, when I got shot, the ambulance was there. I can hear, and when I got shot. Without somebody calling, I heard, I heard the ambulance coming. You know what I'm saying? So that what kept me um, kind of cool, calm, and collected. You know what I'm saying? But um, shit, man, I don't know, bro. It was like shit, man. A lot of shit going on, man. A lot of shit going on with with street shit going on. Yeah. Like beefs and shit. Mm -hmm. Like beefs and shit um, like that. I really had no beef because the because like shit, I ain't gonna lie. In that in that time in the neighborhood, like anybody kind of like tell you like shit, we finna come through that motherfucker. Them, I, I don't even hang with my homeboys at that time because they was strictly on the ride around with the K in the car. You know what I'm saying? And, but nah, I ain't had no beef. Like, I ain't had no beef. Like the nigga shot me was just wet up and stupid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And. You know, like, he knew what it was. It's just to the point to where it's just like, man. I had, and I had that going on. The guy shot. You know, they was following me. Um, You know, I had my, you know, situation with, you know, who I was dealing with. You know what I'm saying? So I had, I was losing money doing this. Shit was going on with me in the streets already. You see what I'm saying? And then when I got shot, that put a, a stop to that shit. Then you got to read. And then I got shot and went to jail. The guy shot me, told the police on me, and I ended up going to jail from the hospital. I had left what? that motherfucker at first. Wait, 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 wait. What did he tell them? They was just on me. They didn't know if it was me. You see what I'm saying? So he told them it was, it was me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my confirmed. name and different yeah. shit like that. He ain't telling, he ain't know none of my business. But he knew who I was, and I went in there on the Jane, on the Jane Doe, like before, before they even the laws even came, cause he he ended up telling somebody that they asked him that he was talking to them about me. So when my partner came up there and told me, my my grandma, mama, everybody in that motherfucker, when he came, told me I, I got out that bed and left, and we left. I still had a tube in my side, so I had left and shit, and my mama begged me to come back to the hospital crying and shit to come back. And when I came back, they locked my ass up. You know what I'm saying? Locked me up. I stayed locked up about two weeks. And when I, so when I got out, I got a monitor on my leg and shit. I can't leave what they, home. What they locking you up for? What they, I mean, what they fucking I had like a blue one. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I had blue one the whole time. Like three years I was on the run. You know what I'm saying? It was blue one and some other shit. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was locked, but but damn, I got a blue one for when I first got out. I I got caught with probably about two stones. You know what I'm saying? I got like two years probation. I got now I got a, I ain't got picked up. I got a fucking monitor on my leg, hundred thousand dollar bond. That don't warrant what the fuck. But they was they was already had their claws in me. You know what I'm saying? So it was hard for me to to um. Maneuver. I might be able to maneuver for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Then some bullshit. Mm. So, all right. Did you have any like when you got when you got locked up? You know what I'm saying? Did you have any inclination? Like, cause some people be like, "Man, I know I'm finna get locked up like today." But I was under the understanding. I was getting followed. I was getting all that shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's like I never had drugs. I never really just really had drugs on me. I ain't never got caught with no drugs. So all that pulling me over, taking me out, doing everything you doing, you really like missing the whole play, fucking with me. 
You see what I'm saying? Because my shit was set up by my OG. So I'm kind of following his line. So you got to realize everybody I'm fucking with is old as a motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, they can't see the play. But, um, shit. I had to, but they, they, they was on me. They was on me, but I, I never, I lived in the area the way you got to get caught. I never got caught doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never got caught doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? So that was amazing to me. I never, un, I didn't understand the process of, of none of that. So I, I, but see, the Colombian I was fucking with was already locked up. How you telling? I don't know what he was doing, but he was locked up yeah. longer than me. You know what I'm saying? He was locked up about a year before I got locked up. Then I got locked up. You know what I'm saying? And shit, I don't know. So when they, so when they came and get you, like where you at? Like what's going on? I was at the hospital, man. My my girl had just had my my son, and what? she had called me when I made it to the hospital. I got to the hospital. I went up there. They brought my baby in. They brought the they they brought him back out. And the laws came after that. They came right, right in there. I went, I went, I went there. Good ten minutes. What? And I ain't never seen him no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn. So, did you find out how they knew you was gonna? Or they was following you? So somebody they knew you. Probably, somebody probably told Tipped them. Out. I mean, yeah. somebody told the whole situation. Yeah. What you know? Shit. That somebody had to tell them. Oh, they probably they probably had a phone tap, my phone tap. I don't know. Shit, they I don't know. It's shit. the feds, man. You never know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I don't know, man. And, and it had to be a little bit more difficult than it is now. Now they ain't got to leave their computer to see every motherfucking thing. Damn. So you get so when you get locked up, how many years did they give you? They gave me fourteen. I had money. I had a money laundering case. The the uh, the Colombian I was dealing with, right. Like before I ever met him, they was already watching it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I had ended up, we was doing some shit where we was trying to go straight to Columbia type shit. He was supposed to leave, he was going. So when we went to, when we went to go send the money, you know what I'm saying? I went with him and the whole building and the whole place with the police. I found that out down the line because you got to realize he telling me all this. You see what I'm saying? When I run into him, he run into play to me. He who I fuck with. He my this is my boss, is. man. Yeah, this yeah, this, yeah. this 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 who I fuck with. This who I follow. This who, you know what I'm saying? This who fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like a son to him. Um and so he just he just running the whole play different shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Turned out to be what it was. He had, he had you know, he had, he had been at him or something. Mm. So he was at the hospital when I left. But before I can get out of, when they took me to jail in the hospital, before I can get out of jail, he they picked him up. They had him just pulled him over on some immigration shit. So he had been locked up. I stayed, like, that had to be, that was nine six when I got shot. I didn't go to 97, so I stayed out about another year or something. You know what I'm saying? I stayed out about another year or something. Until oh. I had my kid. And when I had my son, it came out. Damn, so you get 14 years. Mm-hmm. You go in there, man. Talk about, like, how is it in that? Because, I mean, it, you know. I mean, you run, in the, you run in the niggas you know. You know what I'm saying? You run in the niggas that been in there a while. You know what I'm saying? Something different. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm, like, 22. Yeah, and, and like 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 I say, um, you know, you still puzzled and baffled by the fact that, bro, I never got caught doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like like I'm saying, when I was when I was a kid, I killed somebody and turned myself in. Like, what did you turn yourself in for? What am I? What 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 am I agreeing to that I did? It's a lot of shit somebody else say I did. I ain't got no choice. You know what I'm saying? What am I pleading to? I got to find something to plead to. I didn't do nothing. You never caught me doing nothing but what you say I did. So if you say you say what I did, man, and you done beat me down to this battle, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? What 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 what's your options? 
I don't know what I did. I ain't never got caught doing nothing. Not nothing, never. I ain't never got caught with drugs. Yeah. So you just in there still. How long, I mean, how long did it take you to kind of shake the disbelief of like, man, you know what, I ain't do nothing. I, I don't know but why I had I'm been here. locked like, up when I was 15. I shook that disbelief the day I walked in there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when you when you turn yourself in for something like that, you know you're not coming home. The thought of coming home never crossed my mind. You know what I'm saying? I ain't thinking about home. I'm thinking about this workout. I'm thinking about that suit. Just this whole thing. Thinking about life. this coffee. Yeah. I'm thinking about what coming on on TV. I'm thinking about that nigga in my room. That bunk. I'm in. I'm in tune with what's going on in here. I'm not in tune with what's going on in there no more. Outside no more. That's a whole different world. That shit don't even really exist. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not my reality. I accepted that as soon as I got there. You know what I'm saying? After I did that first arraignment in six days, and they denied that bun, and I ain't getting out, I just, I accepted it then. You know what I'm saying? Damn, so, but the music's still going. Y'all still got to put the album We out. hadn't even dropped. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Y'all still got to put the album out. It's a crazy thing. Like, Johnny, I, I had a, um, what's the crazy part is, I had a um, Rolex at, um, for Johnny, the dude Jerry. And she, I, I had like about 10,000 on it, or some shit, about 10, 12, something like that. So I told her, they, Hawk took all the rest of the money to finish, finish the album up. Yeah. He finished the album up, but I was jamming Pat shit at the time while I was going to court. I had got a CD of his shit. So I was jamming that shit, but we dropped, I don't, you know, my homeboy finally, you know, he, he finally did what it took, you know, to drop it. And this is this is Ron G taking over. Yeah, this is Ron G stepping back, um, to do what, you know, need to be done. Yeah, yeah. So then um talk about cause I mean when you find out that Fat Pet dies, I mean you and you know, I, you I was in I was in I was still in the county. Mm. I, Pat died for I, did he drop his tape before he died or he died right after? No, nah, he died before he uh before it came out. Okay. I, Cause he had already died. Um, I don't know who told me, man. I don't know who told me. And I I don't remember how first conversation. I don't remember my first conversation with him, cause he walked me through that shit with my brother. You know what I'm saying? So that shit kind of hurt me real bad because I couldn't be there for him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we couldn't. You know, un, you know we couldn't share that or whatever. Um, but nah, man, I don't, it was like shit. It was a disbelief, cause it's, it's so, it's so out of ordinary, man. You know what I'm saying? Like if a dude doing something wrong get killed, you kind of can understand. But when you when you ain't raised like that, you get like how getting killed is the most, and the most stupidest. I don't understand it, man. Like who would want? Like that's the last thing. You would think somebody want to kill a hawk, man. For what? Like what? For what? But uh, mm. no man, man. So yeah, at this time, I man, you get you locked up. Fat Pat dies. Screw dies. Mm. Um, talk about when you find out. You know, what I'm saying DJ Screw died. See, I see Hawk walked me through that. I call Hawk. You know what I'm saying? Did you hear on the radio he told me, and he he really was hot. You know what I'm saying? He really was he really was more mad because he say he had seen him. He say he had seen him, and and to, to to the way he feel like the original people that was around Screw when he was at the house or whatever wasn't around Screw at the time. You know what I'm saying? This 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 what he relaying to me. This is not my me saying this. You see what I'm saying? And he was just mad because they, they, they didn't do what it took to, to bring him back, but they probably couldn't. You know what I'm saying? But he he, I, he honestly felt like if he was there, he could have saved him or, or something like that there. Because he didn't did it before. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was in Lafayette, and um, I think it was called Corn, not Cornbreads. Um, what the fuck? Strawberries. Yeah. Everybody that came bears. on here talking about, bro, you like the third or fourth person to come he on here and talk about strawberries. Place. Yeah, he fell out at that motherfucker. Mm. Yeah, he fell out. That was my first time seeing him fall out. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, he fell out at the bitch. So he knew he had a problem. He even tried to stop a couple of times. Like, it's been times where he quit. You know what I'm saying? 
He wasn't no, you couldn't smoke in his house. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Like when the laws ran in around about that time and shit. Well, then he got back into it heavy, I guess. When I left, he was on drinking the paint, drinking about two, three paints a day. Shit. Damn. I couldn't handle it. Yeah. Really so, cool. man, so you in there, like I said, Fat Pat, DJ Screw. Uh, or you, cause you say you got it in 2008. Yeah. So you came out right after maybe Hog died, right? Yeah, let me see. Cause I can't, I, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, about two years seven, later. Eight, something yeah, like that. about two years later. Yeah, mm. yeah, two later. It had to be about two years later, cause I had about, I had about, I had some years left before I went to the drug program, and he he died before I went. It was about a year, two year and a half, close in between two and one, one and two years. You know what I'm saying? And my mom, my homeboy told me this shit. I'll never forget. It. I was sitting there watching the young wrist <laughs> in the TV room. <laughs> and he came to me. I didn't believe it. I tried to hope not, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times people tell me shit, and I call home, and it's not true. You know what I'm saying? But when I call home, my mama, my mama told me. Yeah. Man, fucked up real bad. And that was, you say, probably like the one of the toughest ones. That was, that was the toughest, besides my brother, you know what I'm saying? Besides my brother. That was kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was real hard because I was like, shit, man. At the hog left, I really like shit. That's what really made me like, I don't really just fuck with too much shit. I don't fuck with too much of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So you uh, talk about, man, when you come home, man. Like, what's on your mind when you like, man, I'm finna come home? You know what I'm saying? Shit. Nothing. Oh, uh, and you still because you got because you got music. fourteen cause you got fourteen and you came home and were yeah. like nine or something. Eleven. Eleven. Eleven, yeah. 11 years. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> nah, well, none of that shit on my mind. My kids was on my mind. You know what I'm saying? My kids was on my mind. I don't think hustling was on my mind. Hustling wasn't on my mind. I, I ain't go back to hustling or none of that shit. I um. I just was chilling for a while, you know what I'm saying? You know, I had, you know, me and my mama had got close while I was in there. So shit, like it was it was a repeat. But when I got out in juvenile, you get out and you see, boom, damn, poverty. Like one thing about jail, like jail is jail, but you don't see poverty. You think it is, but everything in that bitch clean. Niggas gonna have clean clothes on. You ain't gonna see a bomb on the corner. Drunk, stank. You ain't gonna see none of that shit. You don't see barefooted kids on, um, you know, dirty kitchen. Or, you don't see none of that shit. And when you get home and you see all that shit, you like, man, you just want to change that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, but my family was real strong on um, being protective of, of me not getting in the shit. You know, I did my whole life in jail. I've been in jail my whole life. You know. It's the longest I've ever been out of jail. You know what I'm saying? So they more protective of me not getting in trouble. I need a job and everything. Man. So you done had a job? Yeah, yeah. Oh shit, KK the working man. Working like a motherfucker. <laughs> Nigga pull up on the dock, no man. Shit, I was like, man, last thing I want to do is talk about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I don't want to be in that shit, man. I'm at work, baby. Yeah. You feel me? It's clear to me that I let it go. Won't you let it go right now? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went through my transitions and shit, man. Yeah. So where you at right now today? Where you? I mean, where you staying, sure. man? Is everything kind of behind you as far as like you over having to go in? You adjusted to life and you know just everything like I just that? Be or? chilling, man. Yeah. I I be chilling, I'm trying to just I don't know, man. You know, I'm trying to trying to just I I still be. It's like. I don't know, because I guess could I attack the game from a money standpoint and not a talent standpoint to where that's what I got to do, you know what I'm saying, to to even get this shit to roll it. But at the same time, though, I don't feel like it's, it's dead, it's going to come back around, because if it's been there this long, evidently it's, it's some substance to it, you know what I'm saying? You just got to tap into that substance and um, figure out your niche, but I think the whole thing is it's us, man. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like you can shoot a low ball or you can shoot a high ball. And they keep shooting the low balls. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not a collective thing. It ain't nothing genuine. You know what I'm saying? It's not a collective thing. Not, okay, cool. You got your story. Okay, cool. You can't dominate no story because you got your story. I got my own story. You know what I'm saying? He got his own story. And if we go by just your story, that means that you is the king. You know what I'm saying? And you, and we ain't rock like that. First thing I told you, well, we all equal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when we understand that shit, we'll get the money like that. You know what I'm saying? But it's cool that people get their money different ways or however they do it. But when you talk about propelling this shit to the, to the next level, if you don't do it as no collective um, situation, whether you like a nigga or not, you ain't you always gonna shoot a low ball. You know what I'm saying? You gonna shoot a low ball. You gonna shoot um a, a watered down story. Um, it's just not gonna be. It's not gonna be. When you get the genuine shit popping, you gonna get some genuine money popping. You know what I'm saying? Cause you gonna get a genuine deal popping. It ain't gonna be no solo deal. You know what I'm saying? But that's just me with it, man. I'm more of a. I stay mad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just, I'm mad at the situation because it's like uh, you can't it's like you got to think farther than you can't never be happy with a situation like I didn't like Jay-Z music at first but I started respecting his moves and how he never was satisfied with where he was see once you get satisfied with having something I don't give a fuck how much money it is once you get satisfied with that shit, that's, that's it. it. That's your that's your ceiling, man. You happy. That's your ceiling. You ain't reaching for nothing else. You don't even go around people that's doing something that you can admire. Everybody that I ever seen do something, I seen somebody that I admired that they was doing that, and I said, I can do it too. You see what I'm saying? But if you don't give props to another nigga, how in the fuck is you going to ever be something? You see what I'm saying? But what you is. And that's one thing, that's why I kind of have a lot of respect and I started listening to his music and listening to his lyrics because even now today, he ain't stopped pushing the envelope. I got money now, I want power. I want to be able to, to say, you, 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 you and you, um, you deserve this, you deserve that, I can do this, they ain't gonna lowball you there, they ain't gonna do, you see what I'm saying? It's just the way what you want to be, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't know, man. You just, you just, I don't know, man. It just got to be a special thing, a special moment. And I don't think it came about yet. That's why I don't support too much shit. Yeah, yeah. It's a so waste you, of time. You want to see the unity. It got to be unity. It ain't going to work. That's been our problem the whole time. If it ain't no unity, it's not going to work, man. What you got going going to work, cool. You know what I'm saying? Do you, you know what I'm saying? It's going to work. But on the screwed up click level, it ain't gonna work. It ain't, it ain't gonna work. Cause it's always a different story, a different people, a different, it's always different. You know what I'm saying? Cause you can't confine that to just one person because Screw was, had many, many people. Like I say, Hawk was mad cause he feel like we was the old people, but you got new people. Screw got new people. How you gonna, you can't disrespect who Screw, um, Classify as his fucking friend because you was his friend first. You know what I'm saying? It don't work like that. I don't know how that's rocking. You know what I'm saying? But I know DEA. I know our story. I know, and once we get together and we do that, and you put that out, you know what I'm saying? You put different shit out with that. You ain't, it ain't separated all lot. It's just one thing. I think our people support us. I don't give a fuck what we drop. We can drop one shirt for $250. But if the hype around it, they gonna grab that motherfucker. They spent two, two fifty, three hundred on everything else. Why they can't spend it on ours? They will, but you have to target that. If you target twenty, they gonna give you twenty. If you target a hundred, they gonna give you a hundred, man. Cause we got a small fan base that'll spend t about two hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? They'll spend about a hundred to two hundred. So you just get that money. But I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what's up, man. You got any uh, you got any last words, man? Before we close up, bro, man. I mean, it was good talking to you, brother. 
Man, I appreciate you coming you know, through, I, man. Um, I had to call in the favor to get him to come through, man. I, I, I appreciate it's just, you coming I, through. I, like, I, I, it's nothing against nobody. Yeah, no, no, nothing. Right. I, I, I just don't see, I didn't see no point. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got nothing going on. You know what I'm saying? I ain't enthused about talking to nobody about what I got going on. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, a solo good friend of mine. If he say that you cool, I believe you cool. You know what I'm saying? If he, you know what I'm saying? If he say, man, you need to do that, I I believe wholeheartedly in my heart I need to do it. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Because he a good dude, too. I appreciate it. Child Solo, for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I came through, though, man. Yeah, nah, for sure. That's what's up, man. Well, mm-hmm. it's the Donnie Houston Podcast, man. Mm-hmm. KK. Anything else before we get out? Nah, that's, that's it, it, man. Good that's talking it. to you, man. All right, ready. That's yeah, what it is, man. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. appreciate you pushing the envelope forward on our culture because without y'all, you know, we couldn't, we, couldn't, we couldn't last. We couldn't exist. If you ain't curious, if you ain't spending your time and your money doing what you're doing, like after I thought about it, I had to think about that. But it's just the space I'm in, you know what I'm saying? But other than that, without, without, without y'all, it wouldn't be no else that, like, seriously, you know what I'm saying? Because you ain't got to fuck with us. You can fuck with anything. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate that. All right, that's what it is, man. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. We out.